I'd like to invite Hannah Van Fleet to join me down here, please. And we're also joined by writer director Saskia Dising. Saskia, good evening. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Saskia, what time is it there? It's uh, almost two o'clock uh, at night, actually. We're very, so, uh, We're very grateful that you stayed up for us. You're welcome. I'm happy to. Um, we're here in West Newton. We loved your film. Um, I understand that you have a personal connection to this story. Someone in your family was actually on that train. Yes, it was um, uh, my uncle. The, uh, he was married to the uh, oldest sister of my mother. And um, he was uh, born in Westerbork, which was uh, uh, the, the camp where they, uh, um, where the Jews of, of, uh, of the Netherlands, they were transported to the other concentration camps uh, in Germany and in Poland. And um, uh, he was, uh, uh, when he was only one years old, they were transported to uh, Bergen-Belsen and from there, they uh, they ended up in this uh, in this last uh, in this lost transport actually and and they all survived so uh, he and his two brothers and his father and his mother they survived and they managed to uh, to return to the Netherlands and um, I only found out about the story at his um, at his funeral uh, I knew uh, that he was born in, in, in the war and I also knew that uh, uh, they were in Bergen-Belsen, but I never heard the story about the uh, lost transport. And actually he died at quite a young age. He was uh, 66. And um, uh, at his funeral, his, uh, his older brother, he told about the, uh, the lost transport and that's when, when it all started and I, uh, started my research and uh, at the beginning I had it was quite difficult to uh, to talk uh, with the family about it because they were quite reluctant to talk about the whole history um, but yeah and that was 11 years ago and um, here we are uh, we, I made this film and um, yeah to tell here the story here we are, and we're extremely grateful that you did tell us this story. Hanna, the person on whom your character is based, you also have a peripheral connection with that person. Who was that person? That person is called... Into the microphone. Can you hear me now? I was saying that the, the person on whom Hanna's character is based, um, Hanna also has a peripheral connection with this person. Well, yes, her, her name is Renata Lecour. I don't know if any of you may have heard of her, but she, um, she wrote a diary from uh, Bergen Belsen. Um, you, mean, you mean my personal connection? Yeah. That she actually survived and her husband did too in real life. Um, and after the war, they moved to the street uh, opposite to my house now in Amsterdam where my grandparents also used to live. So that when I found out about that part of the, well, it's a weird connection. So I, I, it felt like, yeah, I don't know, like something. Saskia, this beautiful film is a war film. It's atypical in so many ways, of course, because it's the war is seen through the lens and through the eyes of women who are sacrificed and suffered, as you point out in the, at the end. But there's something else that struck me. It's a film of silences. Most war films are full of artillery blasts and bombings, or about World War II, it's German soldiers shouting and German shepherds barking. This, yeah. film, is, this film is almost in a void. Um, did you make a deliberate decision to omit a lot of dialogue? Yeah. Um... Because I think because it's after this, you know, uh, uh, 
atrocities of you know the concentration camps and also of the frontiers where where you know the soldiers were fighting i think this particular period after the fighting when when the war almost is over um uh, and i read about that in a lot of uh, uh, things i read about the war this silence and also because it was spring people for the first time re really heard the silence for the first time again uh, and i think uh, also for the characters i think you need a, a kind of silence also to be able to uh, to open up again to uh, to the other person standing in front of you and you know show compassion and uh well let let our hearts speak uh, again so so we were very also in the sound but we, but i also wrote about you know the silence and i wanted to do something with silence and and the different kinds of silence um but i think in the end it's it's uh um and also the contrast because there are also some scenes where where you hear, you know, the the uh, the gunshots, uh, but they are far away, and um, and also barking dogs. But yeah, I think I think you have this. We as humans, we really, I think we can. We we only are able to reconnect again with our humanity if we if there is a certain kind of silence around us. So I want to. Uh, and you you really have to find the silence in yourself before you know uh, you can connect again. So, honey, in the movie, Vera is speaking in Russian. Vinny is speaking in German. You're speaking primarily in Dutch. A few words of German, a few words of Russian, and it's very poignant that you're somehow communicating without understanding your words. But as an actor. How do you manage this? To have any clue what my colleagues are doing here. Um, well, uh, we prepared for, for a long time, obviously, and we, we did a lot of research also with Saskia, but also together we, we knew that we were going to make this film for quite a while because also because COVID hit, right? So, yeah. So it got uh, uh, delayed. So. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew the script very well. The script was in like in red and blue and, and black in like all the different languages and then also in English for the crew, which was also crew from Luxembourg, Germany and the Netherlands. So it was one big mix up and also with a lot of French speaking people from Luxembourg. Um, yeah, it was a mess actually. But, uh, but, yeah. <laughs> But also, I mean, in a way, also very beautiful that on set there was a same sort of feeling of, you know, people from all different backgrounds working on this film together. I'd like to mention that Hannah, in addition to being one of Holland's and Europe's most gifted and popular actors, is also a writer <laughs> and she has a television series called N Plus, which has also been made into a film which you can see on Netflix, which I hardly suggest. It's I, very different though. So just so you know. You will see the full range of her talents. It couldn't be more different. <laughs> I'd very much like to open it up to the audience because I'm sure you have a little yes please. I watched you uh, seemingly introspective as you listen. When you get a script, you see what the I think it's the art of the story is. But without the vocabulary and the words, your expression speaks so loudly and so subtly. What the hell are you drawing on? <laughs> <laughs> Saskia, did you hear that? I, I, I understood. Going, it was a, a going, big compliment. It was a Anna. wonderful yeah. compliment. <laughs> Essentially, in all these silences and with only being able to communicate primarily in gesture, the man asks, what is Hannah drawing on? What sort of well of experience and emotion is she tapping into in order to be able to express these emotions without words? First of all, thank you very much. Um, 
I think it's interesting. Yesterday was the opening night of the festival, and Suzanne Gabe was here uh, from the film Karaoke. He was wonderful, wonderful. Um, and he he was also talking about playing from moment to moment and not giving the moment more than it deserves were his words. And I thought that was very a very nice way to put it, that it's just, yeah, I guess acting is about reacting. And it was kind of difficult, I have to say, to, to balance, you know, all the emotions for this part because you know starting it's it's very um you you know what happened everyone knows what happened and then the film starts so that it's a huge responsibility and also quite dangerous to not you know to not try to play all the horrible things that happen in every scene that's not possible so we we really try to you know focus on the actions in the scene, or focus on very simple thoughts and not on the, on the entire Second World War uh, in every scene, because it's not possible. I'd actually like to direct that same question to the director, to Saskia. As a director and as a writer, does that present a particular challenge that you're, you're writing and acting and directing in the aftermath? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I think that the, the basic uh, uh, thing I learned uh, about all the research is also, you know, uh, that uh, life pretty much went on very quickly. Uh, 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 we as human beings, we are very much, um, we're, we're very uh, uh, de designed, I think, to, uh, uh, to survive and also to be very practical. So I think the, uh, the big emotions, because you can't even, I, ca I can't imagine how, it, how horrible it must have been in those concentration camps, but also the, the, a lot of things you, you read about uh, 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 what happened over there, that also life just went on. I mean, we, we people, we are uh, capable of incredibly, you know, just focusing on, I want to stay alive. And, uh, and I think that that in this aftermath, that was pretty much what happened. People just moved on. And I think the, the, the real trauma and the real emotions, they came, uh, it, it took, I think some people, uh, uh, took them a lifetime to you know to let in those those emotions uh so we, so i was very keen on you know not just like hannah just said not to play out all those emotions but just you know focus on the action focus on uh who's watching who and um yeah i think that the uh, the emotions are not there for the actors to play it's for for the audience to to feel, I think. With their. If I oh. might note as an actor to both of you, thank you for the tutorial. <laughs> he says, as an actor, he'd like to give a note, thank you for the tutorial. Another question <laughs> is um, in the back, you, uh, yes, please. Um, what is it, how, did, how did it happen that the German girl thank you so quickly? The, um, the question is, how does it happen that the Vinnie, the German girl, changes so quickly? Mm -hmm. Who's that directed to? <laughs> I guess the writer. Writer? That's me. Yeah, I, 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 um, I worked on that quite hard. And, and I know the steps are quite big. She's making quite big steps in, in, her, um, in her emotional journey, so to say. Uh, but I think um, as a, a young adult, which she is, she's 17 in, in, in the movie, um, also, it's like the, just what I, what I said before, it's about this survival. And I think 
especially young people can really quickly adapt to uh, quite some uh, life-changing events that they are exper experiencing. Um, and, and she starts from being very stubborn and also, you know, her whole world, world is falling apart. Her father is uh, fighting uh, uh, somewhere in Berlin. Uh, her mother just died and she's really alone. So she needs uh, to adjust real quick in order to survive. But there's more to it than only survival, I think, But she because she really understands that these two women she's living with now, uh, they have seen and experienced things that she can't even, you know, quite understand. But she does understand that it's far more um, brutal and, uh, and gruesome that uh, that she experienced. So I think it's also, uh, I think you, you become very humble at, uh, at such a point. And um, I think maybe it's also got to do with, I, I lost my father when I was uh, uh, 14. And I, um, I remember it was when you, you have such a big uh, loss uh, at that age, you're quite, you're quite keen on this survival modus because you're also just, you know, a teenager who wants to fit in and, and uh, uh, wants to get back this lust for life. So the grieving, I can speak from my experiences, my, my grieving uh, at least, started much later in my life, not when I was 14. There was a question in the back that I meant, I called on, yes, please. I'm going to try to paraphrase. Yeah. The woman who just spoke pointed out that there are two people in the audience who are on that train and that several members of her family were also on that train or from Trobitz. Mm -hmm. And she points out that it's a beautiful film, but she would like to know how closely you try to recreate the actual atmosphere and why weren't the Jews wearing Jewish stars if they were coming from Bergen Belsen and what did these people look like? the people who actually lived this experience, what did they look like coming off the train? They, of course, they looked a lot worse than, than we could ever recreate. I mean, uh, um, that was also uh, uh, one of the, the, the issues we, we were struggling with. I mean, uh, we're living in, a, in, a, in times now where people are well fed, uh, for instance, and uh, we, uh, and also this is a very small film with, with you know, um, not that many uh, money we had. Um, but also the, the uh, so we, we uh, I mean, to recreate that, that that's, that's quite impossible uh, for this budget and also for, for these, um, uh, in, this in this time. Um, um, the, as far as we, uh, uh, as our research went, where a lot of people on this train were, uh, as, especially the Dutch people from this train, they were based in Bergen-Belsen in the Sternlager. They, so, uh, uh, um, and there they had to, they were able to keep their own clothes. They, they were uh, allowed also to take their own clothes and also some luggage. Um, um, these were these were the so-called Austauschen exchange. Yes, 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 and they also got a, a, a special treatment in the Sternlager because the the the, the Nazis they needed them uh, uh, to be a bit fitter in case they they could trade them uh, for uh, for German soldiers or even for money. Um, but obviously, I mean, after this horrible uh, uh, um, uh, train uh, uh, travel of, of 14 days, it was actually, of course, a lot of people already died on, on, on the train and they were starving and they were hungry. And uh, um, but the thing is. This film is not meant, you know, as a as a, a, a social realistic movie. It's it's really fictionalized. It's so we took the events, 
and uh, we took these three archetype women from from the three perspectives uh, to tell this story. I think about you know uh, liberation and the aftermath of the war. Um, so to say, it's yes, it's uh, uh, inspired by these events, but it's not the actual story. And I think also the horror of the actual story will never you you won't be able to put that on screen. I think, and because it's too horrible. And where was it filmed? It was filmed uh, partly in Luxembourg, where we did the uh, exterior uh, scenes, and in Germany we did the interior scenes. So we we uh, uh, we didn't shoot it in Trebitz. Also, because if you come to Trebitz now, it's very modern, and uh, these parts in uh, in in uh, this this particular uh, village that we shot in was was. Uh, we could make it appear that it was 1945. Yes, please. Yes, please. So, um, we had a question for you, and I do as well. I was born in 1946. And I was born in Amsterdam. And I have just a lot of research. I did not do anything about what your films are about. Although you look very much like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to just mention two or three things very briefly. Um, the writer, um, Katya, is that your name? Yes. You use the phrase life went on. And life didn't really go on from my perspective. There were 140,000 Dutch Jews before the war, and about 5,000 came back from the camps. So, for and, and some people survived by hiding, and then there were testimonials. It's wonderful. So, to say life goes on when it was just a tiny remnant that was there, whole communities gone, whole classes of people gone, certainly certainly as a member of the audience to hear that. Also, you know, you talk about Vestibor, which was the camps next to the, uh, the concentration camps. And the people who uh, transported everybody who were Dutch, and the people who got them on a train to Dutch. And I think that um, the character of Anna must have known. How did she get to Burton? And then they put her on these trains again. And those were Dutch people. How would she have been so eager to get back to Amsterdam? A lot of people couldn't live there anymore. So um, I'm not criticizing the film as much as I'm saying that there are there's pain in the lives of real people who uh, don't see this. Amsterdam is a great place to go to. And, yeah. and who are very angry still, not only at the Dutch for what they did, but for at the Dutch for not accepting what they did. Saskia, did you hear that? Yeah, uh, 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 partly, but I I I um I think I understood it. Of course, this um this whole story about you know people uh, uh, going back, which which you could make you know uh, uh, a whole new movie about, because that was very very um, the welcome in in Holland was there was no welcome. I mean, uh, uh, people who returned were were treated very very uh, uh, badly uh, for in, and and they were also uh, they couldn't. Uh, it took them weeks to get back, and and when they came back, they were uh, um, uh, uh, kept uh, uh, captivated again in 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 Holland, and uh, uh, so it was it was one big mess. And I and I do understand if you say, I mean, life goes on. Of course, 
uh, for a lot of people, life didn't go on. It ended, and 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 people died, and it was very horrible. But uh, I wanted to um, I wanted to make this movie about hope, I guess, also, uh, and about you know our ability because there were stories of people you know who um, who 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 managed in this absurd and horrified. Uh, a period of time to keep their humanity, and uh, and for me that was that was a big motivation to uh, uh, to make this film, and uh, like I said, the arena we took we took with this movie was uh, it's it's not a historical uh, 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 piece in that sense that it all happened like this. I mean, the, the characters are fictional and the story in that sense is also fictional. So it's really based on these events, but I make, we made fiction out of it. Bruce? I, I was struck by the uh, suffocation of ISIS, yeah. but not just by the University of Virginia. And I was uh, trying to ask you why, why you wrote that scene there, and, uh, and uh, what implications The, the gentleman mark, remarks that he was struck by the suffocation when Vera suffocated yeah. Isaac. Yeah. And he said it almost has biblical echoes of the sacrifice of Isaac in Genesis. And he's curious about what sort of ramifications that particular item has for the story moving forward. Yeah, for me, it's really about, you know, this, he, it's, I think, the ultimate uh, act of love. Uh, to um, he would have died eventually, uh, I think, and he just wanted his wife to to return to uh, uh, to Amsterdam and to be able to return to Amsterdam. And I think also for Vera, it's a very important thing in the story uh, 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 when it comes to you know storytelling that for the first time she's not driven by revenge but she's driven by compassion and and uh and that's i think where where the three of them uh come together uh, Hannah, when i watched that scene i wasn't sure whether simone knows that vera is responsible for isaac's death does she no i don't think so no i think that would be very impossible to <laughs> Yeah, no, I, uh, I think I also think that Simon actually knows that he's going to die very soon, but she yeah. is not able to accept that. So um, I also see it as a, as a, yeah, an action of out of love, uh, which is harsh also. Yeah. We have time for two more questions, and please be sure to make it as a question. Jamie. First of all, thank you to both of you for this beautiful film. Um, I think that the film is about the scene uh, where Simona does not get on the road. And I, Saskia, I would love to hear you talk about what you think your motivations are, and Hana, if you have different thoughts, I'd love to hear them. We're curious about the scene, the final, almost, almost final scene, where um, Simone doesn't get on the boat. And Saskia, mm -hmm. we'd like to know your opinion of that as a writer, and then we'd like to hear Hannah's view of it as the actor. Maybe we should do it the other way around. Okay. I'm curious what Hannah, <laughs> what Hannah would say to it. Um, I think Simone started to feel protective over Winnie. And now she always felt protective over Isaac. And now he uh, is not there anymore. I think she feels, yeah, she's going back for Winnie. And I can also imagine very, I mean, I, I, I also think that she is not in that sense keen to go back to Amsterdam because I, I yeah, she, I think she, I mean, she probably wouldn't know how horrible people would not accept people back, but I, I, it's, 
it's sad also to 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 go back. And of course, but her parents were still there, so she 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 eventually really of course wants to go back. But I think it's also very scary to to go back in a way that in a weird way it's safe also in, in the new dynamics of this house. And writer, what does the writer yeah, say? No, no, no. I think that's true, but but uh, uh, for me it has a very um because we also struggled with that why doesn't she go back i mean we we had uh, also some test viewings where people were you know um wondering about it but i think also here it's it's you know it's 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 the ultimate form of compassion i think she she um she feels in a way responsible also for for winnie and um and also, I think she's not ready to go back yet, um, because she's in the middle of her grief and 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 uh, maybe hesitates also. Um, one more question in the very back. <laughs> of the barracks uh, of the sick with all, with all the people with heart disease uh, when you consulted with anybody who had seen that barracks the barracks existed in Soviet until the 1994 uh, I believe I know that because I was there in 1995 the training uh, and they were gone um, and um, I was very frustrated. My father died in that barracks in exactly the Colorado house of the Russian, a beautiful Russian building. Um, but um, uh, he, he died of that in there, and I, I really had this, this hunger to know what that room looked like. Um, and uh, so I'm wondering did you, did you consult with somebody who had been in there, or was it was very well done? The gentleman points out that his father perished in the barracks uh, where the people afflicted with, with typhoid were confined. And he never had the chance to see it because when he went in 95, it had been destroyed the year before. And he's curious, he said it was recreated in a beautiful way and he found it very moving, but he's curious in your research, did you consult with people who had actually seen that barrack in, able, uh, in order to be able to recreate it? We had we had uh, actually from Trobis we had one picture from from the barrack and uh, but it was from the outside. Uh, um, so our research mainly was about you know how the barracks looked like in that period uh, uh, of time and and also this was a was a barrack who was very quickly uh, organized. Uh, also by the women of of, of uh, the town of Troby. so it was it was uh, it must have been I think a lot more messy than we made it because we also obviously wanted to make some. But uh, the research was from I saw many pictures of 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 these kind of uh, barracks and lazarets, uh, and and we actually we 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 filmed it in a in a in an old uh, cow barn which we recreated and and we know that you know in Trebis there were uh, there was a barrack but there were also there was also a school where they had a lazarette and also uh, some some cow um, barns where uh, that we recreated we we've run out of time but I'd love to first of all thank you all for attending for the people who have a personal connection to this story and for whom it was painful or uncomfortable to watch. Um, we're so grateful that you're here, that you care to show up and that you care to share your experience. So thank you. We're extremely grateful to Saskia Disking 
and Hannah van Vliet for this beautiful film. And all of you who are friends of Boston Jewish Film and the Boston Jewish Film Festival, and invited you. There are several extraordinary films that are still to be seen Saturday night at the Jewish Community Center. In Newton, we have a film called Repairing the World, and it's about the community of Pittsburgh and its response to, unfortunately, to a modern tra tragedy and how the community became resilient after the massacre at the Tree of Life Synagogue. I highly recommend it. The filmmakers and some of the people from that community will be there this Saturday night in Newton at the, at the JCC. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much, everybody. Good night.